Hello, I'm Joel Najee Hampton, and welcome to Najee Talks, where I, I get discussions from people under the umbrella of lifestyle and have them come to the show and we discuss said topics. Now today, we have Miles Goodlow. Welcome, Miles. Thank you. Tell us about yourself. Uh, so my name is Miles Goodlow. I go by the uh, name Milestones um, when I perform poetry, but I am a uh, you know, college grad, I uh, went to UCLA, went to UPenn, got my master's in education, uh, so I'm very big on education. Went on to teach at Drexel University, where I uh, focused on higher education finance and culture in America. Left that to be a nonprofit consultant and moved from Philadelphia to LA. Um, after I moved to LA, I um, basically was here as a nonprofit consultant and decided to move over and uh, start working in, uh, in tech. So now I work in tech a little bit. Um, so that's pretty fun. I like that. It's education tech. Okay. So it's always about impacting people. Um, okay. So the reason I say that is because my life mission mm -hmm. is to make learning fun. Um, okay. And so my purpose in 2019 is to make sure that we're finding ways outside of the classroom to learn mm -hmm. and make that experience fun. And so I do so by, uh, I actually just recently co-founded the Crenshaw Book Club. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, uh, we're an international book club that focuses on these 20 or 30 books that Nipsey also has named over interviews oh, yeah, over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so with that book list, uh, it made him a public reader, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. knowledge, when he applied it, because applied knowledge is power. Yeah. And so we're now getting people together. We had a meetup yesterday, actually our first meetup yesterday, because the book was about a month old, so yeah. Nipsey only been gone for about two months. Right, right. Um, mm -hmm. And we read a book called Blood in My Eye, by George Jackson, mm -hmm. and uh, George Jackson was a Black Panther, but he was murdered in prison. Mm -hmm. So if we met up with a Black Panther yesterday, we was able to talk about that era and that time to help make that book yeah. more relative to what we're doing today and how we can apply it in real life. Mm -hmm. um, so I am an educator in that sense, and then I write poetry all the time. When I perform poetry, I perform it under the name Milestones, because mm -hmm. uh, I want people to understand this is significant. And yeah, that's yeah. what like is significant. Yeah, yeah. That's where a lot of my concepts and ideas about self-love come into play, right? Because poetry for me is my best form of self-love and um, that pretty much describes who I am and everything that I do, right? You wanna talk about these, these products you have on the table? Yes, so um, I have a t-shirt line called Sophistical Ratchet. Mm. Do both, baby. <laughs> so um, what happens is that, you know, I'm a sophisticated individual. Went to college, I got a master's degree, um, but let's be real, you know, I can go to a party, have a great time, um, be ratchet with the rest of them, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm not a city girl, but I can be a city boy. You know what I mean? yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And um, at the same time, I can also be a leader for a yeah. book club. And at the same time, I can also be a uh, leader and executive in tech. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I can also go to a backyard barbecue and throw it down with some dominoes. Right, you, know right, I mean? right. you don't want to see me on the phones, people. Uh, I would want a real better slap the table. Okay, and then um, at the same time, be able to uh, kick back with my homies and talk about deep things, yeah, and also yeah. at the same time talk about some shallow things, and basketball and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It just really describes the fact that, you know, mm -hmm. as, a, as an African-American male, I have this duality that W.B. Du Bois used right, to talk about, right. um, about how you have to go back and forth between your culture and another culture. Right. And I think within the black culture, I have to go between black excellence and just like ratchetness. Yeah, yeah. And so the fact that I just fluctuate between that, like Slauson, like Slauson Ave. Yeah. You know, like Slauson Western, we yeah. ratchet. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, Slauson the Overhill, I'm sophisticated. <laughs> so I can ride the whole street and yeah. keep the vibe the yeah, entire yeah, time. Yeah. And that's why I created these shirts called Sophisticated Ratchet. Because mm -hmm. I ain't the only one who can drive up Slauson and feel like I can thrive in Slauson and Western mm -hmm. and thrive on Slauson the Overhill. Right. <laughs> um, so, I also have this book, Self Education is Greater Than Higher Education. And it was a crazy idea that I had when I was a kid, uh, really thinking about um, the fact that I wanted to go to college. And I thought that if I went to college and I graduated, that fact alone yeah. would change my life. Right. That fact alone would automatically make me successful. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a great achievement. It was an amazing milestone in my life. Mm -hmm. But I realized that everything I learned outside of class, Interacting with people, building relationships, right. understanding my passions, my talents, my yeah, skills, yeah. going on internships was a hundred mm -hmm. times more valuable yeah. than the actual 
tuition that I paid for class. Right. Now, I'm not saying that to downplay higher education, yeah. but I'm saying that I think higher education is worth every dollar and every cent. Mm -hmm. But your self-education is worth a hundred times more. Right, right. And that's, that's Miles Goodlow in a nutshell, mm -hmm. aka Milestones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you want to hear it through poetry. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another time, Miles. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Let's get into the questions. <laughs> all right, man. Let's talk, bro. All right. Thanks for having me on your show. Man, I really appreciate it. Yeah. I want you to be here. Yeah. I see you had, you know, you got multiple seasons. Glad I was finally able to get me here, stuck in on the second season. <laughs> um, and I think what you're doing is prolific, man. Thanks, man. Trying to leave my, trying to leave my, my own, you know, um, mark. Yeah. You know, that's my, that's been my goal, you know, just like, you know, it's like, so when you die, you know, like, what did you do? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For the world. Like, you know, oh shit, what did I do? You know, like, oh shit, I created the talk show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is dope. How many people I know that do that? I don't know too many people. Uh, yep, yeah, one. <laughs> 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 So, uh, and then, you know, then creating like the production company, which is the labor team that I have. Just, you know, doing the whole thing with like having a labor team that helps out at entertainment events. You know, a lot of people are like, yeah, we don't, like nobody really does that, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we just like get other people, like production people or whatever. Everybody would kind of like separate more so. It feels and they come together under an event. But instead you got like, okay, well, we're, we're providing all the services you need. Mm. Like, okay, what do you need us to do? Right. We're coming in, like, all right, cool. You go with them, go with them, you go with them. You split up, everybody's in the me. Oh, that's and then, you know, then that makes it easier on the person in charge of the event because now that light is up there low. Because now they're like, as long as they can trust me, you know what I'm saying, then we're good. Right. Because then now they're not, because if there's any issue, just just tell me. And then I'll discuss it and, you know, take, take care of it. Right. So that's how, that's how it should be, you know? That's dope, man. Customizable. Uh, uh, production services the, and that gives the <coughs> that gives the person running the event one pinpoint versus having to manage yeah. all these different people yeah. you just become like their like chief operating officer for right. the duration of that event exactly and you're like relax mm -hmm. yeah because organizers are really they get stressed out all so time. easily so yeah so barely yeah very that's nice. awesome man why am i need to talk to you all camera about that yeah of course you know, i think i have something in my mind that i like so, okay, yeah, yeah, most definitely. But completely yeah. different. So. All right, yeah. <laughs> let's get it started then. We can stay outside. <laughs> All right, now let's get started. All right, so, Miles. Have you always had this, this self-love mindset? Yes. Yes? Yes. Um, now, I would say it has evolved yeah. over time. Yeah. So, I've always known that, like, you know, these basic human rights, like yeah. self-preservation matters, yeah. right? And so, um, I realized when I was younger that I'm gonna have to learn to love myself or appreciate myself and actually uplift myself yeah. because there's no one in my ear really like gassing me up all day and showing me what I need to do to be my best me because yeah. it's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that probably clicked when I was like, <clears throat> 14? Okay. 13, 14? Mm -hmm. so. That ever since then, I'm like, all right, bro, like, take care of yourself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, that's just, that's definitely important. I think mama, like, I think I like a mom, like, a late blooming situation for me more so than anything else. Because I, I guess I was always, like, the person that cared more about other people's opinions than my own. Mm. I mean, I yeah. was a victim of that, too, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And I think that comes into self-love, where you just put your... your your value on, on external forces yep. and resources yeah. versus internal yeah. resources. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, more than anything, once I decided that I was going to take care of myself and love myself, and I realized, oh, excuse me, a lot of the issues I had in life yeah. were coming from me. Right. You know, whether it be romantic, financial, physical, mental, spiritual, all these issues externally, the things that I did or did not have in my life. We're basically just a reflection of what I did and did not have internally. Yeah, like, yeah. In my own soul. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would value others, and, and I still do to this day. Yeah. Look for others for validation and confirmation, mm -hmm. but it's a lot less now than right. it used to be when I was yeah. 14. Right. 14 for having this epiphany. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah, mine was, yeah. Mine was around undergrad at the time. Okay. Yeah. Nah, like, so you said, so once you get to that point where you like really like, you know, with the self love becomes like the foundation, you know, then you, you kind of just stop caring about people. Like, like not like people, but like right. their opinions. 
Right. You're like, I'm like, because that's why, you know, I got into so much stuff in college. So I was like, I'm just going to do it because I'm interested in doing it. Right. Like, I don't really care what y'all yeah. say about me doing it. I'm just going to, you know, do it. Because, like, because, like, you because, like, you know, nobody knew anything about it. Yeah. All people around me thought it was like, oh, you know, their boyfriend or something like that, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, and so I'm, like, curious. And I'm just like, I don't even care. I just, I'm going to try it out and see how it goes. Right. You know what I'm saying? And go from there. Like, and so that's kind of, like, how it's been going, you know. Yeah. Trial and error is like, it's legitimately in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trial and error is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. I call it trial by fire. Yeah. That shit will burn you and you know, all of a sudden you're like, damn, like, okay. Right. If I this scar, I will remember what not to do. <laughs> um, and for me, I falling on my face and learning by getting smacked in the face is yeah. probably the best way for me to learn. Right. Um, it just sticks in my head. It just mm -hmm. never goes away. Yeah. Um, and, then from there, and then from there, I can truly, truly learn. And I have moments and spurts of self-love, like what you're talking about, just going and doing something. But I think the level of confidence that I have now to my self-love is com is like complete. Yeah. And it's, right? Um, and we'll rest it. Life is not complete. Life right, is right. continuing the journey. Yeah, yeah. But I now got to a point where it's like, oh, okay, this is what I do, and I'm doing this, and I don't care if anyone else likes it. Right. I just hit that like a month ago. Mm. In all aspects of my life, mm. I had certain aspects. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. care what other people thought, right. and that's why I said it was an evolution for me. Right. Thirteen, fourteen, I was like, "Well, bet I like music. I'm going to be in a band versus playing sports." Right. So every time somebody was like, "All right, I, oh, you're in a band. Why aren't you playing football?" Right. 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 Music. Yeah. Music it soothes my soul. Mm -hmm. The true answer was that I was going to do so much. I think at home, yeah, and, and, and inside my own head, music just gave me a chance to scream in a beautiful way. Mm. I like that. I like trumpets. I'm loud. You in Tuskegee, you know how the trumpets be. Right. That yeah, band, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you were to the if you went to ABC, bro, you probably would have been in the band, honestly. Oh. I can already see you. <laughs> oh, there's no miles. Oh, there's no miles. I would have nope. been drum major, bro. Been yeah, yeah. Drum major is killing that shit, man. Damn. For sure, bro. Because Crenshaw Band was like an HBCU band. Mm. there. So it was, it was, that's the whole reason it was exciting. It was yeah. like being on drum line. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was like the trumpet version of Nick Cannon. <laughs> Let's go. Like the only taste I had of band was when I first went in there, I did a girl that was a, a flat girl in the band. Oh, okay. So yeah, so yeah. I, so I we were freshmen, so she was just starting. So she was she did the whole prayer process, mm -hmm. wearing white, having like three three days. Yeah. Like that shit was hectic, bro. Like she was like, she would go in the morning, right? And go at lunch and then, and then go in the evening. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? But the thing is, I learned a lot, you know, I was like, a lot of stuff I never knew about band and stuff like that that she was like, tell me about and stuff, and I would meet, you know, people that she, like, was friends with from the band, and so, you know, getting that interaction was like, you know, really cool, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I wasn't in the band, but I got, got a good little taste. Got a little taste. <laughs> a little teaser. Appetizer. Mm. Uh, all right, so, all right, so when it comes to, your, like, your, like, the things you love, right, what is the hierarchy, like, what is your order? Mm -hmm. Um, this is really good. Because mm -hmm. it okay. <laughs> what I love more than anything, yeah. Uh, number one's gonna be God. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second's gonna be me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> me that includes my dreams, my ambitions, yeah. uh, my body, my mind, my soul, my finances. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll go back and explain why I picked this order. So God. Me, mm -hmm. um, then it's gonna be education, mm -hmm. then it's gonna be family, friends, okay, and then it's just open. That's it. You, you, every, everything else is not priority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're there, yeah, yeah right. You know, I might have some leftover love for you, yeah, right? yeah, but like that's it. So it's God first, just mm -hmm. because God uh, essentially is the reason why I'm here, right? right. I feel like I have a destiny and a purpose assigned to me by God, yeah, um. And I don't, I'm sorry, I have a destiny assigned to me by God. Um, so I think your purpose involves and changes over time. Yeah, you yeah. decide what your purpose is yeah. to fulfill your destiny. Yeah. Um, and your destiny is just assigned to you. Exactly. Right? Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah. You don't have to choose your destiny. You're just going to fulfill your destiny regardless. Um, and now you can choose whether or not it's a pretty fulfillment right. or it's an ugly fulfillment. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, want to be at the lowest level possible or you be at the highest level possible. Yeah. But you are who you are. Right. Um, so that requires me to be the second person most mm -hmm. important. Yeah. I gotta get myself together to live and reach my potential as I see fit. Yeah. You know, um, and if without me 
fully have a like filling my own cup, yeah. I have no water to pour into yours. No, uh, <laughs> and then you, know, you look like. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so so God, mm-hmm. me, uh, education. Yeah. Education is by far my favorite passion. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my biggest passion. I've been involved in it. I have a master's degree in it. Right. I've been working in education since I was eighteen. Mm-hmm. So I have those eleven years straight of working in education, mm-hmm. building curriculums, working in higher education, working in high schools, mm-hmm. uh, getting people to the next level, and now being a curator of self education mm-hmm. as the co founder of the Crenshaw Book Club. Right. Because now I'm encouraging people to read beyond school yeah. and look at ways to apply it. I don't know anywhere else where you can go read a book by a Black Panther and then have a Black Panther break down, bug it down with you. And then you have a conversation with people from all different walks of life, yeah. right? People who grew up around all white people, people who grew up around all Asians, people who grew up around all black, yeah. people who grew up in blacks and Latinos, people right. from New York. And right. like we had somebody fly out from New York to come to the meetup oh, at the wow. Crenshaw Marathon store. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. 3,000 miles right. all in this room, you can't recreate that. Yeah. That's self-education, right? Right. That's 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 us deciding we want to learn yeah. something for our own life and benefit. And I think learning is the best thing that you can do. Mm-hmm. There's always more to learn, um, and there's always more to teach. Right, right. And so after that, family. Right. Um, and I will say this, family, by default, as a relative, you're in my family. But there's also like those friends who are so key. Yeah. The awesome family. Right, right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, like you. I've been to your family events. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You met my family, right? He, he wants to be at Hampton so bad. I am the fourth brother. We don't look like it, but trust me, I'm more real than anyone. <laughs> It doesn't help because my mom calls him the son sometimes too, so it doesn't really <laughs> mean that was I don't know who else you would need to acknowledge in this room. You know what I'm saying? Our brother graduated from UCLA Medical School just two days ago. Our <laughs> Hamilton brother, okay? Yes. Uh, 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 and then friends. Friends yeah. are just, you know, I, I would group uh, my friends in there because your network matters. Right. Being able to support other people who aren't your family and things like that, yeah. um, I think are incredibly important. And if you're not impacting people, then what are you doing? Right. That's Nothing. Right. Yeah. You're boring. You're whack. You're <laughs> selfish. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And so friends represent the community. That's yeah. All. And so my friends are going to be the Crenshaw community. It's going to be the Oakland community where I'm originally from. It's mm-hmm. going to be the Queens community that I used to live in. in Mm-hmm. It's gonna be people who are maybe like a frat brother of mine, but we don't talk like that. So yeah. in my family box. But if they reached out to me, I would have their back. Right, right, right. And so that's those are people that I would consider friends mm-hmm. um, that are the fifth most important in my life, and that allows me to choose what I need to do every single day very easily. Mm-hmm. So that friend uh, situation where a friend and uh, education want me to do something at the same time. Yeah. Nine out of ten of choosing education. Right. Because it's the priority, priority, yeah. Priority, yeah. priority in my love list. Yeah. I mean, because the thing is also depending on, I guess, the, the what it is that the friend wants you to do. Because yeah. it's not like really. Like, like super like, dire. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if it's not, you're like, well, I can see you later. Like, this is something that I probably can't do again. I, it literally happened yesterday. So yeah. One of my best friends is a bodybuilder. You know that. Yes. So I'm ascended physique, right? Like, <laughs> super <laughs> swole. I mean, <laughs> like, Swoller than your favorite swole friend. Um, and he's a bodybuilder. I mean, he got uh, um, uh, second or first place yesterday in his competition. So he had a bodybuilding competition yesterday in Torrance. Yeah. And um, I think my, my and that was at yeah. 1 o'clock. Mm-hmm. My book club met up at 11. Mm-hmm. And of course, people were rolling through on CPT. Right. So it really started to like damn near 12. Right. So then we're finished up meeting with the Black Panther and having that whole conversation, and it's 4 o'clock. Right. Now, I couldn't decide to put my friend as a priority over education. But I can't do that because yeah, yeah. my love list says yeah, yeah. education's higher ranked. Right. So when it hit one o'clock and I was like, man, I could leave to go support my friend in his, in his event, in his yeah. competition, um, I actually chose instead to stay yeah. with the education and continue the conversation and do what we need to do. I'm also co founder, so I felt like it's a bad Yeah, thing. right. It's, yeah. And then you know? the, just the fact of like how that turned out. <clears throat> Because I'm pretty sure you, you didn't originally you know, think about that experience happening. And then it just happened. You're like, like this isn't going to happen again. 
You know, like it's like how I do with the show, these episodes. <clears throat> I like the authenticity of these conversations. That's the important part. Yeah. Like I don't want to just cut things out and then people don't get what's going on. Right. right. Like unless it really just like goes off topic that much, I can just like cut that part out. But if it's like, you know, still around the the topic, then it's like, yeah, keep it going. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just gonna keep rolling because it's authenticity is important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think you gotta be real with yourself. Yeah. And that was something that I think was super hard for me to do. Mm-hmm. Because it's hard to love yourself when you don't know who yourself is. Right. And so until you can have self-discovery and understand who you are, mm-hmm. I don't think you can really manifest <clears throat> your destiny. Mm-hmm. And then you can't do it at the highest degree of your potential right. either. Yeah. So self-love, I became obsessed with the concept of self-love because of the fact that I knew I didn't know who I was at a certain point in time. Um, and then I didn't know how to achieve my, uh, what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I had to find who I was, right. and then really create who I was. Mm-hmm. And then from there, be able to actually <clears throat> take it to the next level. <laughs> And the way that I was able to do that, yeah. by taking it to the next level, was by um, <laughs> by making sure that once I found out who I was, I started implementing on how to actually manifest the, my best version of myself. Yeah. In doing so, I had to do it in, a, in the, the ways of a superior man, which is to do it with all love. Right. So I'm going to give you all of me yeah. in pure and straight love, take it or leave it, world. Mm-hmm. I don't care. If, if yeah. you leave it, or take, I don't right. care if you yeah. like it or not. Yeah. So somebody told me, oh, so Mr. Ratchet, why do you want to be associated with Ratchet? Ugh. And I was like, mm. I'm Ratchet. Right. It's real. I'm that, that's, that's who, he, that's I'm who I am, right? Ratchet. Let him know. That. Mm-hmm. Don't forget the Sophista. Yeah. Because I ain't just one. Yeah. I'm both. Right. You know, but I can say that with confidence now versus two years ago when I started this t shirt line. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Ratchet. Mm. Mm. I didn't fully believe in myself. Right, myself right, and right. Right. To believe in myself. No, I definitely, I definitely get that. Yeah. That's kind of how I was with this, with the talk show. Yeah. It was just kind of like, you know, wavery at first. Like, I don't know. Really how was this a manifestation of self love for you, the the, the talk show? Because you're talking to other people. So yeah. So it's a hard way to figure that out, but you're technically in every episode. Right. Because right. at first I was going to do it just on myself, but then I realized I can't keep as much content going if it's just me. Yeah. So the thing is, I talk to so many people, like you, you do. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, trust me, bro, I, I've been hearing about it. I was just, <laughs> the girl I was dating for, for like some years, yeah. she was like, every time we would walk, on camp, walk around campus, people, everybody would say hi to me. Yeah. She was like, she was just waiting for me, and then, and then like, all right, are you done? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go. And then like, my roommates too, they'd be like, oh yeah, he does it all the time. I just, we just get used to it. We just wait down the hill or something. Like, they're only done in like five more minutes. Because right. it's like everybody be like, hey, hey. Like, I guess the point where I just be like waving them. Mm-hmm. Or like, yeah, it's not even like going to you. Did like, you ever feel like conflict? Like, when you knew somebody wanted to stop and talk to you, but you just like, ah, I got something else to do. So you're just like, what's up? And you keep walking. They used to feel so bad. Like, and then I was like, hey, look, I got something to do, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. At least you do that to acknowledge them, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. then it's rude to just keep walking and ignore them. Like, and then I'm talking about you after, it's like, oh, you fake, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You go scare me, right. I, I say that like, look at I, I want to hear from you. <laughs> That's something else I want to hear. You see what I'm doing over here? I ain't got time for you right now. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, just yeah. At least just make sure to say something. I don't like to be rude. You feel me? Like if I see you, oh yeah, hey, how's it going? You know what I'm saying? Like I've had times when people were like were upset because I took too long to say hi. Mostly girls. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Why you didn't say hi before? I was like, I didn't. Tell me see you. Or it was either I didn't see you or you were just too far. Right. Like I'm like, you're like hell over there. Like how do I see you? So now I'm near sighted. I just But uh but yeah, so anyway, so I'm I I love the conversation. Like these type of conversations. So I know so it's like, oh well, I just I just talk to these people that I talk to all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About the stuff. That they want to talk about, right? Because I know people have passions about things. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, so since I started the production company, and it was kind of like you like you know how you said like kind of like the fire. So somebody put a fire in me to start it, right? They're like mm-hmm. get started, do it, get it in, name, logo, everything. I, you know what I'm saying? Professionalism with like the IG stuff, whatever. I got you. Yeah. And so it's the push. So I kept doing it, and then so then like this one was kind of like you know like your first child is always going to be the hard, hardest one. Take care of. Mm-hmm. Then the second one is the briefs. Cause you good. You like. So when the second one came, I was like, I'm just gonna do it. 
Right. I was like trying to get help from people. I was like talking to people and stuff, whatever, trying to get information. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I already knew how to do the logo and the name and Instagram and stuff, whatever. So I like knew the basics of how to get it going. Right. And I was like, I'm just gonna do it. And I was like nervous about like camera, but I was like, oh, I have an iPad. So I iPad is good Boom. for that. Boom. And then we got this cool table in here. How would you describe like in your own words, self love? Mm. Self love is knowing that you're doing your best to become the best that you are capable of mm -hmm. becoming. Okay. Self love is knowing that you are doing your best yeah. to become the best mm -hmm. that you are capable of becoming. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, this is all right. So, we know how we have the hierarchy, right? God and then you. Right? God and the person, whatever. So, the God of the universe, how people call it, you know, that they send the. <laughs> They send the signs, right? Mm -hmm. you, and the thing is, you gotta learn how to accept the signs. Because for me, I didn't accept them until it took me a while. Like, it, within college, like, I had read it, The Alchemist. Okay, yeah. I remember you gave it to me. Yeah, yeah. Pablo Coelho. Pablo Coelho, man. Dope book, man. So, anyways, that was the book that opened my, my eyes. I'm like, yo, like, this is dope. Like, so you're just like saying, like, just open up and accept things, as it, and then it's gonna come. And then you gotta take it, though. So you gotta notice these signs. And the thing is, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be in chiropractic school right now. Wow. Because I was like, I went to a, cause I almost, cause it was a summer thing. I was, I had to be at school for summer, my last summer for classes. And then, so I was also, cause I was doing research. And so we had some high school students come in and they would be doing like our presentations that I, that we, the research we did. So I was gonna be helping them. And then the presentation was supposed to be that, it was a Friday, I was supposed to be going to Morehouse Medical School for like a one day uh, symposium. Okay. And so my supervisor slash mentor was like, you're just gonna leave them during the presentation? Like, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to just be there with them as their mentor. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I kinda wanna see what this is about. And she was making me feel so bad though. So I was like, I guess I'm just not gonna go. And then she ended up texting, she called me that night, the night before, and was like, I'm sorry, you know, I shouldn't have said that. You should go to this thing, see what it gets you, whatever, if you get out of it, I'll be there for them and support them for you. Boom. All right, I was, cause I, no, I was, I was so bad. Like, I was like, man. She had love for you, yeah, yeah. That took a while. Yeah, so I was like, cool, thank you. But you advocated for yourself. Yep. You know, self -love. Yep. And then so that, so because of that, uh, there was one black chiropractor at the event. And then so I was telling my girl, like, with me at the time. And I was just like, yo, I was like, this comes my mentor, watch. Yeah. Right before we had, cause I was like talking to him, I was like, yo. And so we just like chatted up about life. I called it. And we just chatted up about life, bro. Like, it was just like, oh man, he was talking about chiropractic stuff, and then he was like talking about like, like just like the healthy lifestyle, and like, like just like, like, you know what I'm saying, like all about good stuff, you know, we vibe. Just like, just like, and I was like, yo. And then he was like, so let's, uh, so anyway, so Alchemist, right? So I read the Alchemist, right? And so basically he taught me how to just like accept what's, like, you know what I'm saying, the, what the universe is giving to me, right? Right, like, right. It's a uh, science. And so a lot of times what I do is I'll go by three. So if I, if I see a sign of threes, then I'm like, oh, okay, it's meant to be. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Retweet. Same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I see something three times on my bed, like, yeah. I'm sure, like, that's made for me, like, that's me. It has to be, right? You're like, yeah. it's telling me, like, you gotta do it. Like, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so anyway, so then the, comp, the symposium, there was a symposium, met a black hair out there, we vibed. He gave me this card, was like, give me up any time, you come on, clinic, whatever you want to do. Right. Right. Yeah. He had a clinic in uh, Decatur, Georgia. So he's like, if you want to come by and see how, how I do things or whatever. Yeah. And then, so then after that, I was still doing all my research. Started the, the only, there's a school in South, there's, there were two in South Carolina, Southern California, uh, but one of them got, one in Hollywood was closed down, so the only one left is the one I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, it was like, it was the only one out of all the schools that had like a program to where if you was under 3.0, but over 2.75, you were good. You can get in still. Wow. So I think it's really small window. It did, but the thing is, it's good. Because the thing is, it's like, so what happened was, since I was at school for so long, I had some classes. So I, the, the counselors I was talking to from, my, from the school, they, were, they looked at my attraction and took all the best ones. Mm -hmm. And they was like, you have a 2.8. Because my overall was too poor. Wow. Right. All I knew was that. And then so once I got that, it was green light. I was like, all right, what up? What I got to do next? Right. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I kept talking to him the whole time. And then so my life was explained, you know, in the conversations. And he was like, all right, so for your, your, um, what is it, like the, 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 the little essay you got to type or whatever? It's like the, damn, what's it called? It's like, you talk about yourself. 
Personal like, statement. Yeah, personal statement. He was like, whatever you told me in the conversations we've had, just put it on paper. And then you're good. <laughs> Exactly. So I threw it on there, whatever. Then, uh, so I found out that one of the recommendations had to be a chiropractor. So I worked out that the chiropractor I met, the one I knew, indicator. Yep. Wow. And it worked out, and then he gave me such a beautiful, a beautiful recommendation. That's awesome, bro. And then, uh, and then, then after that, the I had like a application fee. They waived it. Mm. And then I was supposed to go come out here for that interview. I was in Alabama, so I, I wasn't done. And then, there, so I did a phone interview. And then same day, called me back and I got accepted. Wow. Yeah. You were here. Right. There's Come a welcome, welcome to SCU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I didn't even when it was like uh, they had like a two hundred fifty dollar fee for saving your seat. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, I don't have it. And then there's like, I work you write, you know, talk about a letter and we can try to get a waiver or whatever. So the thing is, the guy that does the waiving, he should the counselor showed it to him. He was like, here's the for this guy trying to get you know get his thing waived. And then the guy didn't look at the letter, he was just like, do you think he's, he's SU material? The counselor, because he knew me, he was like, yes. And he's like, all right. Wow. That's all we needed. <laughs> just yeah, that works, one, man. That one of one of thumbs up, right? So he's yeah. just like, all right. That's why it's like always about who you know, not what you know. Yeah, I think it's both, but yeah. absolutely. But I mean, a lot of times it's like that who you know, it's, it helps out a lot. It's, it, it's, but also it's, the, the what you know can, can build to it too, can foundation wise. It's what you know about who you know, and, and, and it's also about what people know about you. Yeah. Right. So, like in that moment, he's able to advocate for you, your counselor, yeah. uh, and say like, yes, he's worth it. Right. Right. Based upon what he knows about you. Right. You know. So it's like a full exchange. Right. What you know mm -hmm. empowered the counselor to believe in you. Yeah. Which later on, came back full circle. Right. Okay. I, I got it. That that yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause so I feel like it's sometimes it's not what you know, it's yeah. who you know. Right. Sometimes it is what you know that gets you to know who you need to know in order for you to get where you need to go. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes. <laughs> so, but the thing is, so just like having that mindset now has you know gave put me into a bunch of ways. Like even when anything happens, you know what I'm saying? These different schools course wise, I still even like you know. Felt Don't like do it three times. times. That's not time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Total opposite. I, I don't think I'm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. All right, I'm done. And then feel like, like you know, it's like not you know, it's like anything that's negative, or whatever. I just take what grand stuff um, and keep pushing. Like I can keep going. You know what I'm saying? So if some things don't happen how you I want. I kind of like negativity. Yeah. Right. So um, now, universe, I don't don't bring me more. Yeah. Like necessary. Yeah. Um, but what, what, I, what I mean by I like negativity is that I like going through hard times. I like overcoming challenges. I like I consider myself a conqueror. Right. right? So if there ain't nothing going wrong, ain't nothing to conquer. That's the point. Right. Right. Now the way I look at life is like you know you get to one level, and then okay, this is a new challenge that pops up, and then you conquer that level. Right. Then right. a new challenge pops up. Okay, I'm gonna conquer that level. Yeah. Okay, new challenge. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I like as long as I know that I'm progressing, yeah. my challenges are like in alignment with where I'm trying to grow. Yeah. Then it makes more sense. Right. I had to. I had to 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 like make similar mistakes. I have a similar story about yeah, yeah, yeah. you know things like that as far as like school experiences. But I basically mm -hmm. uh, when I left UCLA and went to UPenn to do my master's, I got an eight out of forty on my first essay. Mm -hmm. um, that's an F. Yeah, not good enough. Right. So yeah. <laughs> then uh, my next paper, my second paper, and my third paper had similar scores. Yeah. So in grad school, if you don't maintain a B average, mm -hmm. you get kicked out. At yeah. A. So if you don't have a 3.0 in mm -hmm. all of your classes, you're getting kicked out. And Ooh. nor can you earn a C. Damn. Okay. Right? A yeah, C. Yeah. So, so you get a C, you know, uh, I'm sorry, a C minus or below. Okay. You get a C. Okay. You, but mathematically, you only yeah. allow to get like one. Yeah. In order to keep going. Mm -hmm. so you get less than a C minus. We have passed like that too. Mathematically, you're we basically it. just getting kicked out of school. Yeah. So I get pulled to the side by mm -hmm. a professor. He says, look, I don't know where I'm supposed to you. Mm -hmm. Because... You got three failed essays. Right. His class had like two failed essays, um, and then one was another class. But okay. so he was like, and then all the teachers talk. Yeah, yeah. Friends, right, there's right. only like sixty of us in the school. Right. So they're like, we all know all of you. Right. 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 So right. they chopping it up. Yeah. Like, so basically, right. how do you feel about that? Uh, that one young black kid. It's only like one black. Yeah. There's only two yeah. young black males. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was yeah. me and this other guy named Colin. Yeah. So. And Colin's a PhD student, so mm -hmm. they're talking about master's students. They're like, oh yeah, one young other master's student or the doctoral student? The master's student. Oh, okay, Miles. Yeah. yeah, no, he's failing. I was like, yeah. well, yeah, he's failing my class too. Oh my mm -hmm. God, he's failing my class too. <laughs> oh my God, all of them are failing. First of all, long story short, 
um, I ended up having to go get tutored by one of the PhD students. Um, I went to another professor that was more willing to help me overcome mm -hmm. the challenges rather than just tell me that I was failing. Yeah. See, broke it down, Dr. Finney, shout out to Dr. Joni Finney mm -hmm. um, at UPenn. I'm not sure if she's still there, but mm -hmm. like when I was there, she literally sat me down and said, this is how you write. Yeah. This is how you make a good sentence. This is yeah. how you make a great essay. Mm -hmm. This is how you make a phenomenal paper. Mm -hmm. And boom, broke it down for me. I dropped from an 8 out of 40 to a 38 out of 40. Mm -hmm. Moving me at the bottom of my class to graduating at the bottom of the top. Right. So mm -hmm. I was like 25, like 75th percentile. Okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. only 25% of the classes were doing better than me. Because yeah. it's hard to bounce back from. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. People graduate with like a four point oh. I ended up graduating. I'm just leaving this down. Yeah. Uh, I ended up graduating with like a three point six GPA, okay. Okay. which was great. Right. Coming from a fail. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know what an eight out of forty years, <laughs> but trust me, eight and three six. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, this was gonna get down. I did not graduate Crenshaw High, get a full scholarship at UCLA, mm -hmm. move to Philly to get my master's to get kicked out. Right, right. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. I gotta go back winning. Yeah, like, yeah. yo, I did it, people. You can do it too. Right, right. <laughs> and so that was the whole reason I had to succeed. Yeah. Because I had to let people know that they came from a similar school like Crenshaw, not known for his academics at all. Yeah. But you can actually go to not only to a big state school like UCLA, you can go to an Ivy League institution and succeed. Yeah. But they would only believe me if I did it. Exactly. No one's going to be like, oh, well, you didn't, you have that. So to bring it back to yeah. self love, I had to learn how to improve myself mm -hmm. in order to be in a position to improve others. Right. And so my self-love lacked a lot of times when I was growing up because I always tried to put others first. Right. So even in a, a negative sense, we talked about how we used to look at other people's validation in a negative way and how that would affect our self-love. Right, yeah. But there's also positive things that you can do that can have a negative effect on your self-love. Right. You can constantly put others before yourself without taking care of yourself. Right. Yeah, so with self-love, and that was something I talked about too. I did a keynote address at UCLA speaking at the Career Center on yeah. Thursday. Okay. And so I was talking to the students about how they can manifest their career, but I told them a lot of times we get into positions where we're stuck trying to help other people. Right. And that affects our ability to self-love. Right. So I told people, um, you can't bring everybody with you, right. right? What you want to do is leave a blueprint for them to follow. Right. So your personal success, and which is a, a reflection of your self-love, mm -hmm. right, is going to be a great blueprint for people who want to do something similar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and I was saying, so if you're in engineering classes and your engineering friends are lackluster and then you're succeeding in engineering, and your ability to master the material will put you in a better position to be able to tutor them on the side. Right, right. Right. So student, quick example. Right? Yeah, yeah. And those examples are endless. Right. In that. So whatever your career life is or whatever it is that you're doing, there's a black chiropractor that succeeded with self-love and laid out a blueprint that benefited you. Yeah. And then you'll be able to do the same thing for another young black uh, chiropractor in the making, yeah. you know, yeah. but when, when do you graduate? No, like, you know, in a few years. You no, know next, next May. Uh, next May? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more year. Oh, it is 2020. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so by 2021, you <laughs> definitely <laughs> hook somebody up. You know, like, well, right. I got you. Right. So that's the approach that I'm taking in life now. And yeah. that's what self-love is for me now. Yeah. Like, I have to improve myself in every aspect of my life, <laughs> live in my deepest passion, yeah. and make sure that I'm always constantly achieving my purpose mm -hmm. so that my life mission of making learning fun is going to be a closer to complete each and every day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, going back on that recommendation. So it was, it was uh, interesting. So my, you know, my last year of undergrad was rough. I almost didn't make it out because of restricted situations. Wow. Uh, but then, what's crazy is one of my Masonic brothers, who's also a close friend, he he's a photographer, so he forced me to take photos for graduation, even though I wasn't graduating yet. But I finished all my program stuff though, so I like finished everything so myself. You know, it was just that I wasn't breaking back. money. It was just no, no, it was undergrad, yeah, yeah. but it was financial oh. aid that was holding me back. Yeah. And then so I'm at the graduate, I'm at the, like at the photo shoot. And this, the, so some guy comes talk to me, he's like, oh, you ready to graduate? And I'm just like, I don't even know if I am. And I was like telling him my situation. And he's just like, don't just like, you know, slum around. I slumped for like a whole week. Because uh -huh. I was done with the program with school. I had passed everything, so I was good. But I just had to like pay to get done. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was just chilling like for like a week or so. And then the photograph happened or whatever. And then he was just talking to me. And he was just like, on my head, like, 
don't just sit around and do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know a lot of people, like I mean like professors or everything, whatever. You can talk to them and see if maybe they can help you out for a moment or something like or you know, you co-fi, co co sign something or whatever, so you can get done. Right. Get out of here. If you're done, you just gotta pay to be get to get out, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, you know, I took his advice, you know what I'm saying? And so I found out that, that he was the ex mayor of Steve. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> so clearly you got a degree. <laughs> well, at least I found out later on that I just had to go talk to my financial counselor. I've never seen him before. Oh, okay. And then the thing is, the loans were there. I just had to like get everything together and sign stuff, whatever. And there was like one little bit of money, money that wasn't gonna. It was like a loan that didn't have enough time to go through within that last week before graduation. Oh. And so it wouldn't have been enough time. So the dean of my college. She actually went and talked. She talked to somebody and was like, You got any free money? You can throw him, basically. Uh, right. So, right. so she was talking to people, yeah. And so somebody found another loan for me to get, and that my dad, like, threw off, that gave me the rest. Yeah. So I was good after that. Oh. And then I was like, Cool. So then I just like, and then I had to like wait through hours to get my tickets for graduation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But besides that, but the thing is, what, what, when I realized it was done, because my roommate, who was uh, Mason Brother Nun too, he was like really close to me because he already always took me around his family during like when I came home. Yeah. So they took me in like crazy, bro. Straight mm-hmm. love. Walker family. But anyways, uh uh so when I graduated, his little brother asked me for a recommendation for him to get a scholarship to a college. Hmm. Easy. And it's you at that. Right. And I'm just like, I was like, it's crazy because the thing is in my letter, I said my alma mater, Tuskegee University. Oh. That was the first time I used it. Yeah. And I was like, now it's real. Like, I'm, I'm a graduate of a, you know, of a, of a college. One of the premier HBCUs. Yes. Oh, that's, 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 that's. <laughs> so just that recommendation, it was like, it really, really like solidified within me, like, yo, I'm really already doing it. You know, that looks good. Yeah. Cause I know a lot of people that didn't finish. Yeah. Man. So it's like, you really sitting there like, man, this is, you know, this Even is, at UCLA, only 66% of the black men finish. Mm-hmm. See? You know? oh. And on average, most people don't graduate school with... Uh, 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 well, it takes people six years on yeah. average to actually finish school. Well, it took me six too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a lot of my close friends, they didn't finish. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know somebody... Uh, uh, it happens to a lot of people, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but then, like... College ain't easy. It's, it's not. Yeah, and I think the outside forces in college really can hit somebody 20 times harder than you. Yeah, there are a lot of people that are affected by other life, expanded yeah. life. Unless you're a science major, I'm sorry. You just, you take a chemistry and stuff, like, good luck. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, well, I'm a science major, so, yeah. I, yeah. I know. It was funny. <laughs> What's funny is I would be talking to people that are like, like, so I hate talking to business majors, bro. Uh, because they be like, talking about how hard, they be like, they be trying to act like they shit hard. They be like, come on, how good grades they got. And I'd be like, yeah, and I be like, and I was just sitting there like, what do you guys do? And then they be like, yeah, we just sit in class and then we get homework. And we have pro- and like presentations. Yeah. That's all they have to do. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? I was like, we gotta study all the fucking time, bro. Like, right. for exam, we always get some quiz or some exam, we always get some type of presentation as well. You know what I'm saying? But, and then like, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, in they're just yeah. trying to go out here and play the money game. Exactly. Right? Which, once you get your basic needs carried out, it's just yeah. a And then uh, my last year, I was talking to her, aka uh, from Detroit, and she uh, she was a psych major. Solid. Shout out to the case. <laughs> <laughs> so she was a, I mean, uh, she was a psych major, and she was a um, Rose Scout. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, yeah, she was dope, bro. And she had like hey. a 4.0 and shit. She was about to graduate. How you fumble that bag, bro? Huh? <laughs> Never die, never die. No, the thing is, so, so, so no, she was telling me, she was telling me how she felt, like, I, like what she felt interesting in me. Yeah. Because the thing is, I was experienced in a lot of stuff, very, very diverse. Not great, but good at everything. So she was just like, you're like a master of all. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, yeah. And she was just like, I'm, I'm just like good at this. <laughs> like only, this cool stuff and, and like projects and presentations and stuff. Like that's all I'm good at. That's why I'm good at that, like school stuff. But you're good at everything else. So I was why, like, she was attracted to me, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that, just talking about like challenges. Like now, going back into school, you know, it's like going back into, I'm in the clinic all the time. Yeah. I actually just picked up another shift in Northridge. My clinic she gave it to me. Mm-hmm. So I'll be in Northridge Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. And I'll be in Whittier Clinic on Thursdays, and then I'll be at school on Tuesday in class. Okay, dope. And uh, so the thing is, it's like, because it's like, I gotta get back into that 
that that groove of being uh, in the clinic and being basically you're uh, you're basically seen as the doctor to the, to the patients. Yeah. So it's like that whole experience is like I gotta get back into it because when I was away, I wasn't doing nothing like that. Like my social life was not really much social because I was within the warehouse. Right. Where you don't socialize that much. And then and so it's like and then and then just even when it came to like having the having the like someone like telling you things, whatever you got, but like, learn how to like get back to being um, humble about things because it was like because it's like because you know just within these last few months I've been the head running for a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Starting two businesses, being a host of the talk show, um, being a leader over the over leadership team. Huh? No, it was not leadership. Do you, do you have a self love regimen? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have a self love regimen. Okay. Right, so I know what I need to do for myself before I even go out and do anything for anyone else mm-hmm. that allows me to feel full and complete. Um, so I have to one workout okay, right, yeah. every single day. Mm-hmm. Now, some days that's literally 30 seconds. Other days it's 30 minutes. Other days it can be three hours. Right, right. That's why I just, yeah. I want to feel sexy mm-hmm. and working out does that for me. Right, right. So both. All right. So then, second of all, I gotta meditate. Right. Okay. Because um, I just need to get out of my own head by yeah. getting in my own head. Yeah, yeah. So then I can get out of my own head. <laughs> Either that clicks for you, it doesn't. You know what I mean? You get it or you don't. It, no, I get you know? it because it's like it's like we be in our head, but just like in our head, in our head. But we need something yeah. outside to come in to the to help us with that. I get it though. Yeah, yeah. And then. Um, and then after that, I need to learn something. Mm. Just, just learn something. Yeah. Um, and then I either need to write or recite poetry. Mm. So once I do that, I feel complete. I could do that literally in five minutes yeah. um, every single day. Sometimes I extend it out longer than that. Uh, it really varies, but every day I'm just, it's just guaranteed. Yeah. I got it. I'm good to go. Yeah. And, um, and that allows me to feel complete. So then if I help anyone else, I'm good to go. Right. You know? Yeah, that's good. Um, and I can then, and I love helping people. Right. I know I'm going to do it. Yeah. I've done it to a detriment, and I want to do it to, 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 to be a positive, actual value add. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like. Yeah, I only got about, probably about five more minutes before I got it. So. Okay. All right. So, yeah, it's just like, all right, so real quick, just, um, let me see if I can throw on some more. So, it's an important one, I guess. Mm. Okay, so this is a, this is a good one, okay? Okay. Alright. Do yeah, you I can't read that at all? You don't have to, I'm gonna read it for you. Can't <laughs> write <laughs> right. you write like a doctor. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> you see day ten right, this is worse. Oh, I bet. He actually already got the doctor degree. Yeah, so like, it's not gonna be any better now. You are MD, like Yeah, straight down the hill. <laughs> After uh, this. You and second graders. Yeah. Second level. <laughs> Shout out to you, David. Doctor David Hanton. All right, so all right, happy brothers. <laughs> all right, so Miles. All right, do you have any advice for the people that are still struggling with their own self love? Mm. Mm. Wow. Yes, absolutely. Um, if you're struggling with self love and you want, you know that you should love yourself more, take care of yourself more. Let's be honest. You know exactly what you need to do. Mm-hmm. You know exactly what you're struggling. With. You need to have the courage to tell other people no so you have enough room to tell yourself yes. Mm-hmm. So you probably feel like you're lacking in self-love when you're taking care of someone else and you're doing so many different things. You feel busy but not productive, mm-hmm. right? So busy means that you're out all day doing a whole bunch of things and yes, it may look productive on the surface level, right. but do you feel like you got to step closer towards your life destiny, your mm-hmm. mission in life? Yeah. So I always tell people, um, you can be on the best track, you gotta, or actually let's do this, you can have the fastest, sexiest car ever. Mm-hmm. You can have a Ferrari, you can just you know be in that thing, a Land yeah, yeah. Bro, Porsche, whatever, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And you can be able to go anywhere you want to go in that Porsche, mm-hmm. right? And you're like, yeah, I'm about to push it, push it to the metal, zero to 60, 3.4 seconds. Yeah, you're like, this yeah. thing is fire, yeah, yeah. but where you going? Right. And I think a lot of times self-love comes from a lack of direction. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily a lack of ability. 
Mm-hmm. Right? I think God gives us everything that we need. Yeah. It's our responsibility to develop it, obviously. You right, got right. two legs and you don't know how to run or not. Right, yeah, so, yeah. Like, either you run or you're not running. There's some people out there who are not running. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and you just got to be able to move forward. So if you want to move forward in your vehicle, be it your legs, be it your Porsche, be it your jet, but you don't have a direction for where you're going, a destination, mm-hmm. then you won't be able to enjoy the journey. Yeah. And I think life is about enjoying the journey. But we get so stuck up on the destination, yeah. or we get so lost in this very moment, we forget that we're on a journey to a destination. Yeah, yeah. So those are the two spectrums of size, I would say. Are you busy? I'm sorry, are you busy and, and not productive because you don't know where you're going or what you're really doing, which yeah. is doing a whole lot? Or, uh, are you dealing with the issue of the fact that you know where you're going, but because you're so focused on where you're going, you don't really value the journey in the present day moment? Right. I'm more of a person who struggles with the latter, mm-hmm. right? Where I'll focus on my destination and the goal that I didn't really appreciate being in the moment and being present. Mm-hmm. So that was the challenges that I had a lot of times. I would say over the last 10 years, I didn't value some of the people in my life, be it romantically, friendships wise, uh, professionally, because I didn't see where their purpose fit in my long-term journey. Mm-hmm. And if I just would have been present fully in that moment by recognizing where they really fit mm-hmm. in my life, because I understand where I fit in my life, then my life got better. Yeah. Because my self-love increased when I understood who I was, mm-hmm. where I was going, mm-hmm. and how I wanted to get there. Right. And I, I can specifically look at people and experiences just like this and mm-hmm. say I can be fully present in this moment, um, and make sure that I'm fully engaged mm-hmm. because I know this is a part of my purpose and my destiny. Man, I hope somebody, somebody like listens to these words and really like takes advantage of them. These, this is this is gold. <laughs> this is gold, man. It's, it's better to get it from a wise man, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I know nothing at all. <laughs> that's how you gotta do it. Yeah. Stay, stay, all you gotta say the student. Right. Always stay learning. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say, you know, the goal is to make learning fun. Right. That's why I always refer to myself as an educator, not a teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm not just outputting information. Yeah. You know, all this comes from conversations. But I was just learning yesterday. Mm-hmm. I sat in the room yesterday and listened yeah. for two hours. With right. And the rest is talking. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's better to listen than talking. You're not getting that out if you're talking all the time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mouse. Follow your boy on Instagram, Achieve Milestones. Mm-hmm. Right? That's my name on Instagram. Also, my name on Twitter. So, yeah. Thank you for coming. Hey, it's a pleasure. I'm honored to be here. Thank Anytime, you. man. If you have any other topics, you know, come through. All right, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Self love is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I got you for that one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, we can talk about self education, it's a fist of ratchet, you know. I think that would be a good group conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you again for coming in, Mouse. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.